so today's video is just gonna be my um Howard acceptance video moving on to like the actual how I got in process the stats and whatnot I applied via the common app and I'm sure many of you are familiar with the common app but if you're not it's like one application that you can send to many different schools so I started mine I made my account like the first week of September and I was piecing together my application through that time I wasn't really as efficient about it as I should have been Maybe, I feel like if I did it over, I would just go ahead and knock it out. I kind of dragged it on a lot because number one, I was really anxious about it and it brought like a lot of stress because I wanted to make sure I was wording it right, making sure I made myself, um, painted myself in the best possible lighting as possible and all that kind of stuff. And then I had watched every single how I got into Howard video beforehand. So like if you put one out for HU21 and HU22, I watched it, I watched every single one of those. And a lot of those people were saying how they applied like in the beginning of August, in the beginning of September. And I was like, I can't do the beginning of August, beginning of September, just got into school, need to get my life readjusted. And by that time, you know, I was having those schedule mishaps, like whether or not I want to graduate early. So I was still piecing that together. But then September came around and I was just like, chilling basically so i made my common app i filled out the standard stuff where i live who i am all that kind of stuff then you have to do your activities thing and i'll be posting like a whole college series in a minute i mean in a minute shortly i graduate monday so they'll be out pretty soon definitely before february i hope so i'll have a lot more time but you know you do your activities things and i was joining the clubs for my clubs I was in National Honor Society, Mu Alpha Theta, which is like Math Honor Society, um, Joy Club, which is a volunteer club. It's kind of similar to Key Club. It's just not like a national thing. It's just a local thing at my school. I had a job for a short period of time, very short period of time, and I put that on there. What else was it? I can't even think of all my activities I did. Oh, Spanish Club. I took Spanish 3 and I was in Spanish Club for three years of high school. Freshman year, I didn't do anything because, you know, I was a freshman. Just trying to get used to high school. Oh, student government. I am the treasurer and I have been for the past two years. I'm a student ambassador. So I just kind of like give tours of the school and when visitors come, they come to me and then I tell them about the school. New kids, we go um, mentor them, I guess. Just make sure they're um, affiliated and comfortable with the school. We have, we're in charge of freshmen basically and we give them tours of the school and when the school year starts, we monitor their progress. We go to their home rooms and talk to them and they kind of come to us if they have any questions about getting affiliated with the school and things like that. Joy Club, Mu Alpha Theta, Spanish Club, Ambassador, National Arms Society, Student Council, and then I was in JRTC for two years and then I was in like the video production um, club for a quick minute and then it just kind of turned into a class but you know yeah and most of those were community service organizations through watching all everybody's videos I realized that community service was extremely important so I got a good chunk of hours from each of those places. like then and then for the common app you also had to um, write an essay your first essay that Howard required you to write was a personal essay I wrote about YouTube and how that's affected my life not so much as a creator standpoint well, I did mention that in there, but I also mentioned how I how much time I spend on YouTube and I use it for everyday life, Googling how to do math, how to change tires, how to jump off a car. I had to do that the other day and how it's just kind of helped me with not just the, I don't want to call it trivial, but like, you know, the less important things like makeup tutorials and stuff, but also life skills and stuff like that and how I used it and just, you know, I worded it all fancy to make it sound good. And then, of course, I did write about my experience with being a creator and I brought and I tried to tie in as many like important life lessons and character traits I brought up how I learned how to ski in 30 minutes through YouTube <laughs> and I wasn't even good but I just kept googling tutorials until I stopped falling down the mountain eventually you also had to write a second essay afterwards which was a supplemental I I think that one was optional but it, I think it said it was highly recommended but yeah you had to write I I had to write about um, I chose communications as my major film and broadcast media so they asked me about why the school of communications would be good for you why did you choose Howard and why is this like major why did you choose this major basically and just a little secret I had written that essay tons and tons of times applying for like ambassadors student council the broadcast club at my school I've had to write um, the why I want to be here essay essentially three different times so I was just able to like piece together though from those three essays and then adjust it so it like matched Howard stuff and I brought up how I've watched like the Howard news and the Howard radio and stuff like that and things I want to be a part of through that and yeah so I submitted that and I've I was we had fall break the first week of October so we had a week off the first week of October 
and I submitted that either during that or immediately after we got back. I know it was like the 1st of October when I submitted it. Then I sent my transcripts, which was a whole hoot in itself because my transcripts were wrong. I'm in the video production class and I've been in it for two years, so I should have um, class one and class two, kind of like Spanish one, Spanish two, but they put me in class one twice and we didn't catch it until November um, 12th, I think it was. And you know, your outstanding documents were due November 15th. And then when we brought it to the counselor, he tried to act like he couldn't fix it. So we had to go to the registrar and she was on it. And then we also went to a second counselor who was more about her business than the other one was. And she got it together and I got my transcript sent. And he sent it the day before it was due, like at the last minute too. I could see the time stamp and it was just like, dude. So I got my transcript situated. You also had to get some recommendation letters. I sent my recommendation letters to my video and production teacher because, you know, that's what I want to major in. I also sent it to my English teacher from my, from my junior year English teacher because I took AP English that year. AP Language and Composition, I think is its government name, I guess. And I took the AP exam, I made a five on that, so I gave it to her because English is kind of close to communications. Then you also have to get one from your counselor, and like I said, he was very last minute. He waited till the night before to do his recommendation. And yeah, and that was pretty much it. I recommend sending your stuff to teachers that like you and teachers that you feel comfortable to and talk to. I remember one time I sent a recommendation to a teacher that like I liked, and I never really talked in her class. I don't talk in any of my classes, but she literally put that on the paper like, and I, I wasn't even supposed to read it. I'm just telling them myself. But like I held it up to the light and I could see she does not participate in class discussions. She is very quiet and reserved. And it's like, that's the truth. But she didn't have to write like the whole truth. She could have put like, she was very quiet natured and reserved. You didn't have to mention the class discussion part, but whatever. And I think that's pretty much it for the comment app. Those are all like the necessary things that you had to submit for the Common App. As for how I applied, I applied early action because I figured I have a better chance of getting in early action and scholarships are first come first serve. So I was like, I'll just get in that early action pool to get that early action money. And then you have to take the SAT or the ACT. I took the SAT once, I made an 1190 and I never took it again. Then I took the ACT and I flip flopped between a 25 and a 26 each time I took it. Um, the score that Howard received, they got my September ACT score and that one was a 26, but I took it again in October and I got a 25, but they took the 26, so that's good. Which is pretty much average, that's the average score for Howard. When we went to the tour back in the summer, I did tour the university back in the summer. There's a vlog about that if you wanna watch it up here. But they gave you a packet just to see like the admissions profile of all the students and it said the average ACT scores were ranging from 25 to 28 and I was in the average range. I wanted to get higher that's why I took it so many times but because I wanted to be above average to kind of boost my chances but didn't work out that way for me. Mm. And I have a whole video on ACT advice because well, the first time I the first and second time I took it I boosted my score four points by myself just by watching YouTube tutorials, which is kind of why I wrote my essay about YouTube, because that's it's really been helpful in my life. The next thing was, um, my whole life, I've kind of been, been on the pre-AP um, track. I was at a different school freshman year. We had like this thing called the Center of International Studies program. So everything there was like honors. It was like a step down from IB, but a step above honors in a way. I'm not really sure how to explain that, because I don't really know myself. It was such a long time ago. But freshman year, everything was just honors. So I took honors there. Sophomore year, I took all, well, I took all pre-AP classes with the exception of my math and science. I took general chemistry and um, regular geometry. Then junior year, I took AP bio, AP English, AP history, um, and a regular math. Math is not my strong suit. I took algebra two with Trig. And then this year, I took no AP classes because they felt like a waste of my Time. especially in the science and history areas like I don't even want to be a science or history major so I'm not gonna waste my time and then as for the AP literature and composition I just I didn't feel like I needed that so and like I said I made a five on my AP exam on my English one that felt good enough for me 
so I didn't want to spend another $92 on the AP thing. And for my other AP exams, I made a two, which is disappointing because after I saw that I made a five in my other one, I felt like I should have at least made a three. That way I can put like AP scholar on my resume. Oh, I did submit a resume to Howard, like of everything, a, a compilation of like my GPA, outside activities, just, you know, all your stats basically compiled on one little resume sheet. And I attached that PDF to the application but yeah those are all the classes that i took and so yeah everything was due on november 1st and we just played the waiting game until november 14th which is kind of cool i'm good at playing the waiting game i just kind of pretend it's not happening and not think about it so i not to stress myself out all the time the next issue that's about to come up well let me backtrack a little bit um once we got this we waited we waited we waited we got our decisions you know they had the mishap with the timing and then I didn't even get an email. Um, acceptance emails were supposed to come out at December 14th, 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I checked seven o'clock, nothing for me. Nine o'clock, nothing, nothing, nothing. And so I'm like getting a bit worried because everybody seems to have gotten theirs. And I emailed them and I'm like, I haven't gotten mine. And I did this at 3.30 Saturday. So December 15th, that's when I did that. And then seven o'clock. I think it was about 7:30 ish. I got my email. I was filming a get ready with me, and I got it as I was filming the get ready with me. And I think they must have gotten my initial email too about when I sent the problem, when I sent about not receiving it because they sent me a second one later on that night while I was at the Christmas party. Finally got that situated. Howard does not put freshman scholarships online. I've looked and I've searched everywhere. It's really difficult to get it together. You just kind of have to watch people's videos and kind of piece together and see what they got. So I'm not really sure where we stand on financial um, financial aid. I already did my FAFSA for Howard, so that's cool. The only school, I've applied to a bunch of different schools, you know, I've gotten into seven of them and they're all HBCUs, but none of them have mentioned financial aid at all in the acceptance, except for Tuskegee. And I know I got like all my tuition paid over there. So that's always an option. And so we're just waiting on the official acceptance packet from Howard just to see what happens. I will be applying to outside scholarships and it's hard applying to local scholarships because a lot of them, I live in Alabama, so a lot of them are saying you have to attend a public school in Alabama where it's like, I'm not staying in Alabama. So I just it's just hard because of that small piece in the fine print. So we're just waiting on that financial decision. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I think we've covered everything. If you guys have any more questions, leave them down below. Um, comments, concerns, stories. And the last piece of advice, general advice I would say, just be kind of like a well-rounded student. Make sure you maintain your grades. Oh, what's my G? I think I have a 3.7 GPA, unweighted. I don't know what it is without the weight. Um, yeah, just maintain your grades and get involved in some things just to make you like a well-rounded thing. Do your research. That definitely helps. Be informed when you go into it and be patient. You know, they tell you the runaround is very real, which it is. Um, try and be proactive instead of reactive. So when they do give you the runaround, you can already like come back with your end of facts. Like I've already done this, 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 and I need you to do this, this, this. That's kind of what I've learned talking to all these HBCUs about H admissions. I'm not ask, I don't ask them for anything. I tell them what I want them to do and we can go from there because if you ask, they'll just send you all around the world. It's like, girl, I didn't call you for that, but that's pretty much all the advice that I have. Um, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.